Good morning, I'm David Schechter in for Jason and we begin with the upcoming legislative Just session fixing so school finance see. and lowering property taxes are sounding like top priorities now. We have today with us uh, Representative Jeff Leach from Collin County. He is actually in Austin. He's a Republican and state representative elect Ana Maria Ramos from North Dallas, who's here a Democrat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Bud having Kennedy me. from the Fort Worth Star Telegram is here with the questions as always. Good morning, David. Want to start with school funding? Uh, school districts around the state are are clamoring for more money per student. They they just say the times have not kept up with uh, school funding. Um, do you think there'll be more funding for education uh, coming out of this session? I think there will be. I think voters have been very clear, especially this past campaign season. I think everybody was hearing that um, they're concerned about property taxes increasing, but they want to make sure that their public education, their public schools are adequately funded. And so I think the tone this year, and, and from my understanding, the uh, soon to be speaker or presumed speaker is going to really focus on education financing. So I'm looking forward to working with them and making sure that we make that happen in the state of Texas. Representative Leach, do you believe that the, there will be more funding for education? Finding the dollars seems to be so difficult. So that's one issue, but then actually providing more for education. Is that something that we might see? Well, I absolutely think so. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, school finance, education reform, investing in education, um, hand in hand with property tax relief and reform are going to be the two uh, main issues we deal with this this next legislative session. You know, I, over the past 12 months, um, I visited every single public school campus in my district. I know there's other representatives across the state who've done the same. Uh, we've heard loud and clear from our edu educators, our parents, the students themselves, and from our voters that education um, is and should be a top priority for the legislature. And I believe it will be certainly in the House next session. And I believe the Senate as well. Uh, Representative Leach, if, if, uh, if you can hear me there, it seemed like that the Freedom Caucus was a big part of the movement. You were one of the big parts of the movement to choose Dennis Bonin as the current speaker apparent. You know, what made you uh, break ranks with some of the caucus and, uh, and pick Dennis Bonin so early? Well, look, my, my job is to, to represent my constituents in House District 67. And um, the, the reason that I'm so excited about uh, Representative Bonin being our next speaker is because I trust Dennis to empower the members of the Texas House, the most conservative Republican and the most liberal Democrat, all 150 members to aggressively and passionately represent their districts, to advocate for their constituents on the floor of the Texas House of Representatives. He's going to make a great speaker, um, and I look forward to a very productive legislative session under his leadership. Ana Maria, what do you want to work on? What Have you requested committees? Are there committees you'd like to be on in Austin? Definitely, uh, education, of course, I'm an educator, so education is a number one priority for me, and in a perfect world, I definitely work on education. Um, and healthcare also are the constituents in my community. Um, healthcare and education are two of their, of course, top priorities. But whatever committee that I'm chosen for, I'm gonna do the best that I can for the constituents in my district, in House District 102. Um, but absolutely, education would be my number one priority. You're a government instructor. You know that the Democrats will be outnumbered in Austin. What will you do to, to try to get something done? What can you accomplish? We can be bipartisan. We can work with our counterparts. Yes, we're outnumbered, but I think, and, and just like Representative Leach just mentioned, it's time that we work together. I think the voters this past election season were very, very clear. Put all of the nonsense away and let's get to work. And when you look at the results of who came out to vote and what was important to them, I think they sent a strong message to all of us. So I'm looking forward to working with our new speaker and with the House Republicans. And we have a very, very uh, strong freshman class who came in too, both Republicans and Democrats. We had a really good time this past week in our pre-session legislative orientation. So. I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to accomplish a lot. Representative Leach, taxes, uh, property taxes, uh, the revenues are soaring because property values are going up, not necessarily the tax rates are going up, but our values are, are more, so we're paying more tax. Uh, so the state you know, is, getting, is seeing more revenue. Are you going to spend that? Are you going to send it back to us? What's going to happen with that money? Well, Texans of all political stripes from all across this state are calling out for property tax relief. Um, and, and so whether you're Republican or Democrat, no matter what part of the state you're from, I think we have an obligation to very seriously uh, consider how we might provide that relief. The year-to-year -year growth in people's tax bill um, is, is frankly unsustainable. Many people in my district are being taxed out of their homes. And so that goes hand in hand with school finance reform. The legislature has um, 140 days starting on January 8th to come together 
um, to ensure that we're being faithful stewards of the taxpayer money, that we're giving back as much um, taxpayer money, or I should say letting taxpayers keep as much of their own money as possible, that we're fully funding um, the areas of state government that need that, like education, criminal justice, um, transportation, our, our infrastructure across the state. And so all of those go hand in hand together in our budget conversation. And I think we're going to have, I'm, I'm expectant that we're going to have a meaningful conversation about all of those issues well, uh, starting here on January 8th in just a, just a few weeks. What is the connection then to more tax revenue and spending more on education? Are they, are they, are they linked in your view? Well, they're absolutely linked. And, um, you know, we are, uh, we're diving into these issues. We're rolling up our sleeves and trying to figure out how we can from existing revenue sources uh, substantially invest in public education and it's not just how much we're spending but how those funds are being spent making sure that they get to the right places providing our local school districts the flexibility they need to spend those funds um, and so uh, we absolutely need more state funds dedicated to, to public education and in doing so I believe that we can reduce some of the local property tax burden uh, that our taxpayers are having to uh, having to bear right now I want to ask you both, and I know this may be a surprise to Jeff, uh, the uh, Attorney General filed a lawsuit Friday against San Antonio uh, for violating the Sanctuary City law over, uh, over the uh, immigrants from Guatemala who are in the back of a trailer, and uh, these are, are victims of trafficking, but the, the Attorney General filed, filed suit because there was no communication with ICE and they weren't turned over to ICE. How do you two feel about the Sanctuary City law and this kind of a use of it to file suit against the city? Well, um, look, I, I um, haven't reviewed that specific lawsuit or know the facts of that specific case. I will tell you uh, that we're in constant communication with the Attorney General's office, with law enforcement across this state to ensure that that law is being faithfully applied. Um, I, my hope is that Washington will get their act together and come up with real substantive, meaningful solutions on the immigration front. Um, the, the human trafficking element of this is heartbreaking. Um, it should awake all of us to action. And one of the things I so appreciate about our Attorney General and the Governor as well is how much focus they've put on the human trafficking issue. And this is a bipartisan issue that we should come together and do everything we can um, in the next legislative session to address Thank it. Thank you. I'm going to give uh, the but last I don't know the specific uh, facts about this case. We have about case, 20 right? seconds sorry. left. I just want to give you an opportunity to respond to that. Well, I think this, this lawsuit has nothing to do with human trafficking for the most part. It's really going against what the police departments and our local communities have said to keep our communities safe. So I wish that we would focus on making sure that we keep our communities safe and provide the resources and the help that these victims need. Um, and I don't think that the lawsuit is the right way to go in terms of really helping sex victims of sexual trafficking. Thank you both for joining Thank us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.